Well, hello there everyone, and welcome back to another Minecraft video. My name is Shells, and today we are back in the bakery server. As you may or may not know, I was in the bakery server building Atlantis, so that's what we're going to be continuing here today. Now, I will admit that it has been a very, very long time since I have been on the bakery server, um, and I am... Uh, well, on, on one hand, it means that I don't remember what I was in the process of doing, but on the other hand, it also means that I have a, a new look at some of what I've got here and I can make some decisions. Uh, one of the decisions I've decided is I need this to be a center doorway, um, but rather than have it um, you know, change up the way this particular section looks. I'm actually just going to have it split from this point and just make a doorway there. It's not the most architecturally accurate, but I think I need to do that specifically because of how much this wall is infringing here. I can't really put a doorway there when it's cut off partway, and I'd just rather have a front doorway. We're going to do that for both sides, and I'll probably make this a little bit fancier and do some sort of fancy design on the top. Um, I'm still not entirely sure how I'm going to fill in all of these walls. I was kind of playing around with this particular window over here and what I've actually done is I have gone ahead and put in water. I figured it uh, gave me more accurately the color I wanted. Uh, the blue stained glass was too saturated but I found that the cyan stained glass was too muddy and too light. So actually having water there helps. It also smooths out some of the glass textures and uh, it adds a little bit of movement. Now I thought it would be cool if I could have like kelp going in there and fish going in there, but it turns out that uh, on this server entities don't work. Like I tried taking bucket of tropical fish and placing it in here and it just doesn't do anything. Um, which makes sense. You don't want people spamming entities everywhere. Um, and then kelp. Kelp is being dumb and it made me super sad. Um, I'll go ahead and show you what it was doing as soon as I find it. There we go. Um, yeah, kelp is, um, well, it doesn't act nicely. It stacks like that. Um, and I, I guess it makes sense but it did make me kind of sad. So it's the same thing that's allowing things like these stairs to be here, um, is just preventing kelp from updating basically. Uh, and I tried using debug stick on it and everything and I can't figure out how to make it fix. So no kelp, unfortunately, sad day. So this is what we got for the window. I'm still not entirely certain I like it. And I probably will not be doing that for all of these, but we shall see. More on the topic as to what we're going to be doing here today. The very first thing I need to do is finish up what we have. Um, at least the interior here, because I would like to start working on putting in statues and stuff. But right now I've got basically a skeleton. And uh, this skeleton is not helping anybody. It's not making me happy. Um, I need to finish it or at least get it to a more finished spot. So the main thing I need to do is start adding in floors. Right now I have no floor for either the second floor or the first floor. I want to be able to provide stairs that go um, down so it's actually going to be a little bit of a spiral staircase until it leads to this and then it'll just be a straight staircase down. Um, and then because I have a second floor here and no way to get up to it, I'm kind of considering putting in a bridge of some sort right here. Um, now it'll probably be an arched bridge, so it'll actually come up, and I figure that'll be more interesting than just a straight across bridge. So uh, yeah, that's kind of my plan for that. The other thing I need to do is address the giant hole in the ceiling. I've actually kind of looked at this and debated just leaving it open, but I don't think that's such a hot idea. Um, I would like to let in some light here, so um, it'll probably come, you know, looking at here, I'm going to be putting a roof from this point down to this point. It'll be just like a little flared roof sort of thing coming out there. Um, and then what I need to do is actually have this 
come up a little bit more and then probably a traditional dome on top um, is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, now, if you watched my last video on Atlantis, you'll know that I kind of tried something similar to that and it didn't really look very good. Um, so I, I'm a little bit worried, not gonna lie. I'm almost wondering if I need to come in more and then, you know, come up and then dome, but, um, I, I'm a little bit scared of doing <laughs> that. Um, I'm not sure how I want to make this dome and it scares me and uh, we shall see. I also don't want it to just be a straight up dome. I almost wonder, uh, I like having more of the ribbed look. Um, I like how these almost look like fish tails or mermaid tails or whatever um, and I'd like to implement that same sort of look into whatever we do for a ceiling. Um, and we also have to have some sort of holes because otherwise um, this build is going to be too dark and I really want this to be as bright of a build as I possibly can make it. Ah, so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge but we'll go ahead and get started. I think the first thing I'm going to do though is start on making some floors and that sort of thing. Now whenever I am designing a floor, the first thing I do is kind of divide up the floor and make patterns from there. And I could just leave it how I had it before, um, but I keep finding myself wanting to put, um, I, I am going to have a big old statue of Poseidon here in the front entrance. Um, and I want there to be uh, a giant reflection pool at his feet. Um, and I want it to not just be a big square. I'd like it to be longer than not. I did divide this up to where um, I split this square into half since I'm going to be you know, making the doorway from there. But honestly, I think this is too small for the reflection pool I want. So I think instead I'm going to have it come out to the length of, you know, this on the either side. But then I don't want it to go all the way to these pillars, but that means that I think I might split it at the halfway point there and there, and that should be my reflection pool. So something more like that. I know it looks rather big, um, it does take up the majority of the floor, but you also have to keep in mind that majority of this space is going to be occupied by Poseidon himself. Um, he's supposed to be riding on a chariot um, that's being pulled by horses that have six wings. Um, now, I, I know it specifies horses. I think I'm just going to turn it into horse. Um, so we're just going to be putting basically a pegasus that's going to be pulling his chariot. I don't know if I'm going to do all six wings. I'll try, um, and if I don't like it, I'll just put it back down to two wings. You still have plenty of space to walk around, you know, on the main floor here. You just can't go into the very center, which is fine. Now for the base of the actual swim, well, the, the reflection pool, I kind of wanted to, you know, use this light blue glaze terracotta. I don't know, it reminds me a little bit of like what you see in the bottoms of a lot of swimming pools. So that's kind of what I was going for. Though I note that I would not mind implementing some sort of lights into this design. That's something you have to know when working with glazed terracotta is that they always go in groups of two. Um, you know, they, they work with even numbers and don't do very well with odd numbers, which is ironic because pretty much everything else in the game works great with, with odd numbers and not so great with even numbers. It's one of the more frustrating things about working with glazed terracotta. So I'm tempted to just put this as a solid design in the floor and just not even worry about lighting and just make sure that light, there's plenty of lights up above, um, and maybe light up the rim with lights, um, but um, we'll see. I'll go ahead and try that, and if I don't like it, I'll just put in lights somewhere. <laughs> Honestly, this right here is pretty bright um, just because of how much skylight there is, um, and so long as I maintain that, that should be fine. Uh, but the next thing I notice is that uh, I normally leave these th uh, lines in between pillars because that's how I can then guide, hey, that's a square that I'm going to turn into uh, a design. It's almost like trying to make a quilt. Um, you know, you 
basically make certain blocks and block things out to make a quilt. Uh, and I do the same thing when trying to design a floor. But right here I've got some really odd angles that uh, I just I don't really like. Um, mostly because of the oblong uh, reflection pool in the center here. So I think I might finagle, I might leave the outside ones in, but I might just flat out remove all of these ones and have a different design that goes in the center there. Something I'm quickly noticing about this uh, particular, uh, just basically having blue, light blue clay terracotta for the whole thing, is that um, this looks so much more dynamic than this. Um, I'm almost wondering if I should take some of the same gradient and implement it into here. Well, that was probably more work than it was worth, but eh. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I like it. I'll probably change it out later, but for now I can go ahead and move on. Um, so I think the next thing is to just fill in this entire inner layer. It doesn't have to be anything particularly special, but I do worry about just you know, putting in plain quartz. Nah, eh, good enough. Um, <laughs> so for this octagon, I think I really only need to make two different shapes here. I think I need to make this rectangular shape and I need to make a trapezoidal shape over here. Um, now what I really, really wanted to do with this particular floor and why I've been putting off doing it is because I really want to make it look like the floor is made of a mosaic, which of course the best way to do that is to use this glazed terracotta blocks. Um, well, but they're generally, well, notoriously difficult to work with and I'll admit that I am not a master at them. Uh, now, of course, one of the big problems with the glazed terracotta blocks is I can't have it down the center. I'd love to be able to build off a pattern based off of this, um, but we shall see. I might have to have some little patterns like that on either side and then a central pattern. I'm going to mess with it and see what I can come up with. <laughs> hmm. Now I can honestly say that I'm uh, preferring the look of this to whatever this is. I'm almost wondering if I need to basically take this same idea and make a big design to go in the middle here now. <laughs> uh, well, that was a little bit of a pain to do. Gotta, you know, channel my mother's ability to do quilting in order to make terracotta blocks work for me. But I think I have a pattern that I like here. I'm going to try to actually take this same pattern and just repeat it for the bottom of this pool over here. I think that would look better than my terrible wavy stuff. I'm almost tempted to just take this pattern and repeat it all the way around, but um, I worry it's not going to work. Well, I'm about ready to be uh, done with <laughs> Clay's terracotta forever, but uh, I got it done, this main big ring here, and I'm actually quite happy with it. I'll show you what it looks like, you know, walking on it. Uh, it's just, it's got such a nice feel to it, so I, I'm actually really, really happy with the way this floor has turned out. Unfortunately, I still have, well, this floor to do and uh, a second floor to do as well. So fun stuff, gotta get that done. Um, and then I just need the stairways going down from there. So progress. I think for right now though, I think I need a little bit of a break from dealing with glazed terracotta. So I'm actually going to move on and start, uh, I'm going to whack out everything on this wall here and start making a front entrance instead. All right, so I've been messing around with different shapes. I'm mostly just going for, you know, wibbly wave-like things. Um, trying to sort of replicate some of this uh, mermaid's tail look. I really want to capture that. Um, I do worry that we have this nice rigid line that suddenly is just like, nah, I'm just going to wander around. Um, so I, I do worry and I'm not sure what to do for a background for that other than just more of that, I guess. Um, I do want the windows to come at 
to some point up here. <laughs> I'm almost wondering if I should have more wibbly lines, but then just have the windows behind it um, and just have it as part of the design. I think the main thing to say here is that this is a work in progress and I will continue to work on it more later, I think. Um, I do really, really want to get in some stairs and the second floor. And so oh, I should go back to messing with terracotta and actually start getting some of this stuff done. So what I'm thinking for uh, this area is I'm kind of thinking of going, uh, if you want to add contrast between one pattern to another, um, we've got this basically a light blue sort of pattern here. Um, I'm thinking of having the main aisle way be more white, similar to what we did there. But I do want to add some little bits of uh, glazed terracotta. I almost want to add in like some sort of design, maybe something that looks like a, a dolphin or something on the ground. But I don't know how well I can pull that off without it just looking like pixel art. Um, but for the sides here, I'm thinking of just dividing it up into these squares. So I just have to do one square and I can copy and paste that design everywhere. And I think I need to go for a darker pattern than what I have here, which of course means I need to focus more on some of these darker colors and I can't use the white uh, glazed terracotta. I'm kind of thinking of putting in some of the cyan as well. Um, not the most in line with some of my color palette, but I do have some bits of it here and there, just um, even with some of the diamond blocks uh, up above. So I'm going to try to make it work and see what I can do with it. Uh, I'll make the darker pattern first because that's going to be really easy. I just have to make one little tiny square first. Mm, it's all right, I guess. I like the pattern, but it's really, really, well, green looking. <laughs> and I know that's what happens when I mix a nice turquoise in with it, but yeah. I don't know what else to replace it with. Um, I thought about using purple, but the purple did not jive well at all, and um, and it's too vibrant of a purple. Boy, it feels dark down here. Um, <laughs> perhaps we should uh, add some lights to the floor. Not my favorite thing to do in the world, because um, most of the time you don't get lights coming from the floor randomly, but um, in this case, it felt too dark. Although I'm not sure adding light has been an improvement. Hmm. Maybe I'll leave it as too dark. <laughs> so for that main floor pattern, I'm almost thinking of going for this uh, seahorse design. I think this would be kind of neat. Um, unfortunately, I'm not really sure how to best translate that into glazed terracotta. I'm gonna have to mess with this, but this is the vague outline of what I'm going for. <laughs> All right, it, it's okay, I guess. <laughs> um, the quartz is too plain though, so I'm thinking of doing a similar design to what I have there, just on here. I mean, it's not the worst. I don't know, I think I'm gonna plunk it into the build and see how I feel about it. All right, all right, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I will note that my floor pattern, I, I changed the floor to be more of a warm palette and I am liking that more than my cool palette over here. So I'm thinking of taking that same warm palette and uh, putting it over here. I think all I did was I replaced the iron and the diorite blocks with um, some of the warmer blocks. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and see how it looks. Wow, that's bright. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it though. <laughs> That way I keep the warm palette going throughout the build instead of trying to switch to cool blocks for some reason. All right, so now that I've got the main floor pattern done, um, I think what I'm going to do is actually copy this entire build and uh, paste it all the way around so that way I get the same floor pattern um, on all of the segments. Some of the problem is that if I try to copy it later and paste it later, um, I'm gonna run into some issues where I can't actually flip any of these tiles without screwing up the direction of the direct, the glazed terracotta. Um, I found that out the hard way while trying to mess with this stuff. Um, so I could, but I can rotate it. 
um, oddly enough. So that's where I'm thinking if I just grab this entire build and copy and paste it all the way around, um, I'm still going to be making different changes for the other three rooms. Um, but I figure at the very least then I have the basics down and I can make my adjustments from there. All right, here's where I start uh, copying and pasting everything and hope nothing goes wrong. Gabby. Rotate negative 90, paste minus air. Do it again. And again. And I think that comes full circle. Huzzah! Now let's hope that nothing went wrong. All right, let's take a look see here. Mm, looks fine to me. Cool. All right, so the next thing I really have to do is actually put in this staircase that goes right here. Now something I do uh, note, especially since I've pretty well laid out the entire temple, is that it is fairly, well, one note. And what I mean by that is there aren't very many elevation changes. And in fact, like be just because there's a second floor here um, doesn't mean that anything else changes. I know that a lot of more dynamic builds have some builds up and then they like lead down with stairs down to other areas. Um, I'm almost wondering if I should have done something more like that, but unfortunately this is the layout I've got and I can't really change it at this point. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, staircase. Let's get in the staircase that I wanted to get in first. Honestly, this should be a pretty simple staircase. I say spiral staircase, but honestly, it's just making a quarter turn and then it'll go straight down. So it's not going to be particularly spectacular. Um, and if I can, I'd like to get the quarter turn done by the time it reaches this point. So it's really not much that it's going to be curving and then it's just going to go down from there. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> I, uh, I started making them go down, uh, two across for the main stairs. And I did that because I had to make these stairs so wide that it seemed almost ridiculously small to drop it down to one. Um, and looking at it, it's not that bad of an angle, but the problem is that um, I'm quickly running into my door here. Um, looking at the trajectory of this, this is going to end up cutting into the door before it reaches the landing, which is not ideal because I need to have a nice walkway for this doorway and then the stairs on either side. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to uh, delete everything I've done here and just drop the stair size back down to one, I guess. All right, it's not the prettiest staircase, but I think I can work with it at the very least. Now, do I want to keep it as quartz or should I change it to prismarine? Hmm. So here's what it looks like with the prismarine. Um... I honestly wish it wasn't quite so green. And I know prismarine tends to change colors just a little bit, because it's got a slight bit of animation to it. Um, I guess it works okay with some of my color schemes, but yeah, prismarine. I think I might just, uh, yeah, undo that for right now. I think the white is a little bit more neutral, and so it draws less attention to itself. Um, as well as it belongs with the existing color palette. So yeah, we'll just leave it at that for now, I think. Or we do something silly like this, um, but this might be just a little bit too silly. You know, I did this to the stairs partially just to be silly, but uh, actually the more I've left it here, the more I kind of like it, mostly because it gives me more of the color that I want. It looks really awkward on the thicker wedge-shaped stairs, um, but for everything else, it's actually not bad, especially when you're at floor level with the stairs themselves. So I think the only thing I'm thinking of maybe trying to do is, uh, you can see they're all just, you know, facing the same way for the glazed terracotta. Um, I'm thinking of trying to make an actual pattern with it, similar to what I did with the seahorse, and, uh, put that up there instead. 
One of the easiest ways to do that, of course, is to actually lay out the pattern that I want in a big flat rectangle and then select it all and then copy it and then select all of this. And similar to what I did to the glass, we're just going to, you know, snag as much of the stairs as we're willing to get up to there, up to there. I don't want to interfere with any of this stuff, so we're actually going to stop it right there. Actually, that might still snag some of it, so I'm going to stop it right there instead. And we are going to say, replace the light blue. Yeah. Light blue glazed terracotta with hashtag clipboard. And hope that it doesn't kill anything. Ah, yeah, there we go. See? Beautiful. It's such a simple change, but honestly, it's a really good way to make the glazed terracotta look rather than just willy-nilly thrown in as a random block. It actually looks more purposeful and more like a tiled design. So that honestly improved this staircase tremendously, and I think that's what we're going to leave it as here. Now, of course, the main thing we need to change now is we've got this big empty space underneath this staircase. And of course, I'm not going to just fill it in, but I find that staircases tend to look nicer if we add in some more of these repeating arches underneath. So we're going to put another arch there and then we're going to make uh, arches going down the staircase. I know it doesn't lead all the way up to the ceiling, but that's fine. I just want to make this staircase actually look a little bit more structurally sound. All right, all right. It's nothing too fancy, but it's functional. It definitely offers more support. I have debated trying to make the bottom side of the stairs darker, so that way it matches the ceilings over here. Ah, but that's a lot of extra work that I'm not sure I want to do. All right, at this point, I am pretty confident that I can go ahead and copy this and tell it to flip and then paste. Um, <laughs> now, one of the problems with doing that is I've noticed that it tends to flip my, uh, my glazed terracotta. So you'll notice that this pattern is actually not the same pattern as what you see on the floor over here. Uh, so I'm going to have to go ahead and select all of this and uh, do what I did over there, which is, you know, take that and paste it over there again. Unfortunately. There we go. The staircases are in. They're looking nice. And at the this point, I think I want to move on. Unfortunately, the next really big thing to do, like I know I talked about making a bridge over there and putting in the skylight, but what I honestly want to start in on doing is the big statue that's going to go in here. So yeah, since the statue is pretty well its own thing, I think I really want to wrap up this episode here. It may not look like I've done a whole lot um, just because all I did was put in floors, but honestly, these floors were kind of a pain to put in. So uh, I I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the episode here. But before we do so, since I am cutting things a little bit short, I feel like I need to talk a little bit about what kinds of designs uh, to look for when you're doing glazed terracotta. I know glazed terracotta is one of those blocks that everybody avoids just because it's annoying. Um, so I wanted to point out stuff that I ended up doing. You all, of course, know that you can make different patterns depending on which direction you're facing. Um, I, I like using this, the white glazed terracotta because it's pretty obvious you get a sunshine. So if you're rotating, you know, as uh, a 90 degree angle every time you're placing the block, you'll get that. But if you do the opposite rotation around this corner, you end up with a flower design instead. And similarly, you can get um, rotating around a pinwheel design like that. So in essence, there's really like several different designs you can get with just the base terracotta. And those are always my starting points. 
So I think the main thing you have to focus on for glaze terracotta is honestly the corners. You have to really look at the corners to decide what shape you're getting. And I was doing things where I was drawing a line um, with, say, you see how this is making a line? Well, if I wanted to, I would basically play with it until I got the same thing in the right corner and I'm actually drawing a line with that. And similarly, this is making a di diagonal line going across. And in so doing, that's how I was uh, able to make different designs. It's actually one of the reasons why I stuck with doing basic diamonds is because diamonds are one of the easiest things to make with glazed terracotta, um, just because you can focus on the diagonals, the diagonals and the corners rather than anything else. And that makes life so much easier. Um, and I was trying to do things like combining, you know, there was the light blue that's in the white glazed terracotta ended up being more aligned with the light blue glazed terracotta. So therefore I could put all of the bluer, bluer sections of those glazed terracotta next to the whiter sections of the light blue glazed terracotta and it actually blends together all right. I hope that you guys are really enjoying watching me build this on the Baker server. Uh, I know it's been a long project and I know I take forever to get around to it, but I hope that you're enjoying it and uh, hope that you like seeing the progress that I'm making here. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye!